adjust the state of mind here in the city of Seattle. These Washington fans are hungry, and the Huskies themselves are looking for a little bite. Upset. It's raining in Seattle, but that won't deter the boaters on Lake Washington, nor the hardy Husky fans who have shown up here at Husky Stadium to watch their hometown favorites do battle with the upstart, California Golden Bears. And hello again, everybody. Barry Tompkins once more with my partner, David Nori. Well, the Bears found something that had been missing in action last week in the second half against USC. They found an offense. And I think, David, probably the biggest question they have to answer today, was that an aberration, or is this what we're going to see once again in Seattle? I don't think it was a surprise, Barry. In fact, California might have the most talented defense in the Pac-10 conference, and they've been winning with defense this year. But last week, the offense really came alive in the second half. Big comeback against USC down at the Coliseum, down 21 points. The running of Marcus Fields, the big tailback, the play action passing of Justin Vetter, they lay a shock on the Trojans, and today they get an even bigger test on the road with Washington and Seattle. And they're just surging with confidence coming into Seattle. This is a team, after all, that hasn't beaten the Huskies almost literally in a generation. If they're ever going to get them, they feel this may be their chance. The Huskies are banged up. The Huskies are banged up. In fact, Marcus Tuiasasopo is going to get the start at quarterback. He's not inexperienced, and he can hurt a defense with his feet as well as his arm. He's come alive in the last two weeks as a passer. A big game last week against Utah State, and and remember, their Heisman Trophy candidate, Brock Heward, will be available to play today. If this game is tight in the second half, I look for Brock Heward to play. And off the record, the Bears will tell you they'd rather face Brock Heward. They feel they could get after him. He's not real mobile, at least right now. But Tui Asasopo can hurt you with the run. This Washington team has been the epitome of the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Here's the agony of defeat. Last play of the game against Arizona. Ortiz Jenkins for the score against ASU, though. 17, 28 ticks left. They win it. Big question they got to answer. Can these dogs hunt? And here come the Washington Huskies onto the football field. And that, of course, will get this crowd jacked up. The crowd here in Seattle so much a part of things. And right now, we want you to meet the third member of our broadcast team. The guy who's going to earn his money today, I'll tell you that, down there amongst the maddening crowd and in the elements, Larry Burnett. Larry? Well, guys, we are right in the midst of it here, and coaches will tell you the Husky Stadium is one of the most intimidating stadiums in all of college football because the crowd here is intelligent. They know their football. They are involved in the games, and they are very, very loud. That's why Cal this week tried out earplugs back at Berkeley. They got into a room, turned the stereo up as loud as they possibly could, then had their quarterback, Justin Vetter, call out signals to his teammates to see if the earplugs would block out the background noise, but not the quarterback. Some of the We'll try using them today. Whatever they do here, it works because this crowd has gotten Seattle and the Washington Huskies wins since way back in 1976. Last time Cal won here, Warren Moon was the quarterback against Washington. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thanks, Larry. And Warren Moon was just 19 years old. That'll give you an idea how long it's been since the Bears have managed to beat the Washington Huskies. We'll get started when we come back. Welcome back to Husky Stadium here in Seattle. Barry Tompkins, David Norrie, Larry Burnett, the two coaches in this game. Tom Homo, he's it's like your English teacher. He's a guy who doesn't have emotional lows or highs, done a tremendous job, and he has the Bears headed in the right direction. Here's a guy that's been around Seattle for a long, long time as an assistant and a defensive coordinator for Don James. Since he has taken over, the Huskies have not missed a beat. He's won a national championship. Sixth year as head coach, two of the really good guys in college football coaching. Skursky will kick it off for the Washington Huskies, who incidentally won the toss, but they deferred, and that is a, an age-old philosophy here in Seattle. Delta O'Neill and Damian Douglas will be the deep men to return for California. O'Neill, a big play player for California this year. You'll see him all over the place on both sides of the ball, and we are underway in Seattle. O'Neill's going to let this bounce, and it gets into the end zone. He'll take a knee. Bears will start with Justin Vetter at quarterback. He's listed as six feet, and I can tell you I'm 5'8 and can look him in the eye. So that'll give you an idea right there. And Vetter has a lot of help from his friends, at least if the second half of the USC game is any indication. Langston Walker is a first-year freshman who is playing tremendous football. Bears feel they really have something special in him. He'll have to be 
pretty special today. Damian Douglas clearly the go-to guy. Watch for number 81. They will try to get him isolated as many times as they possibly can. First offensive snap, better to throw out of the backfield this time to the fullback Freeman, and Freeman will be close to a first down. Defensively, brought to you by First Plus, Jabari Issa. He's a guy who always seems to be around the football, playing the nose tackle position for the Huskies. Todd Johnson has sort of uh, inherited the mantle left by Jerry Jensen as he went to the NFL. Johnson's a guy who will get after the quarterback, will spend a lot of time likely in the California backfield. Nigel Burton is playing on a sore wheel. He's got a bad ankle, but nonetheless, he's a guy who can stick you and stick you big time. First down for California on the first snap. Give the fullback Freeman nothing doing. Freeman stopped maybe even for a loss. And the man who got there was Jeremiah Farms. So it'll be second down and 10. That first pass play, I think, indicative of what we can expect from the Bears. They're not going to stand there and hold the football. They will unload it in a big hurry. Burton, incidentally, has come out of the game. I don't know if he's injured or not. Straight back, better. Five-step drop, clear on, caught by Fields, got room. 45 midfield, he could go at the 40, the 35 to the 30-yard line of the Huskies, and a flag comes down at the end of the play. It's going to be a face mask, and I think Brendan Jones is going to be the man who's guilty of it. Great job by California spreading the field with their formation. They empty out, and then they slip Marcus Fields over the middle. Ball was perfectly on time. Big play for California. Defense on the defense, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. This is just going to be a little delay route out of the backfield. Number four, Marcus Fields. Runs a little circle route. Perfectly delivered ball from Vetter. And Marcus Fields just a couple steps from going all the way on this. Right at the end of the play there, you saw the face mask. Brendan Jones, a free safety. Incidental face mask, just a five-yard penalty. Bears in business at the 26-yard line of the Dogs. Slot right this time. Marcus Oliver is in it. The running back spot for California. Douglas in the slot. Better rolls right into the pressure. Unloads the ball. It's caught this time by the tight end, Kunkel. And Kunkel is dropped after a gain of about two. Brendan Jones makes the stop. Tough pass, David. Yeah, dangerous pass, but a great athletic play by Better to even get that ball off. He's not going to pick up much of a gain on this play, but the pressure coming from the outside. And this is a trademark of the Husky defense. Jeremiah Farms, number four, putting the heat on Vetter. That's what Washington defense is all about. The eight-man front, and they're going to blitz Vetter a lot over the course of this afternoon. This time they bring Douglas in the slot inside of Joel Young, and they give it to Fields, and he gets nothing. They just have not been able to run the football with any kind of consistency this entire year, and here are the numbers that will substantiate that. down and nine now for California. Three wide outs for the Bears as Delph O'Neill is in the ball game the wide out. Now Better's going to run at the 20 and slides down at the 20 yard line. Looking at a 37 yard field goal from here. Now a smart play by an experienced quarterback. Better knows if he picks up some yards, doesn't want to turn off, turn the ball over. If he picks up a few yards, he gets his field goal kicker a little bit closer. Field position is so important in Seattle. You don't want to turn the ball over. You want to take advantage of scoring opportunities, and Cal has an opportunity early in this football game. Bears have to hustle a, an 11th man onto the field here. Tim Wallach will try a 37-yarder. Both teams have struggled in the kicking game this year. Wallach gets enough on this if his distance is right, and he's off to the right. And so, again, problems that have plagued both teams arise early for California. They cannot convert a good opportunity to score, and neither team is in a situation where it can afford to do that. We're coming back. 
We welcome you back. California comes up empty on a 37-yard field goal attempt, and now it'll be Marcus Tuyasosopo to lead the Washington Huskies to the line of scrimmage. Uh, he is just a sophomore, has stepped in and done admirably for Brock Hewitt, not only this year, but as a first-year freshman. Tony Coates brings experience to the offensive line. It is the most consistent unit right now for the Washington Huskies. As you look at the backs of receivers, brought to you by First Plus, Dane Looker, a walk-on, was a high school teammate of Brock Hewitt. Hewitt said, we think you can play at this level. He walked on, earned himself a scholarship, and now is a leading receiver. First offensive snap for Washington. Play fake, Trias is so the throw. So a comeback and caught by Deschamps. Take a look at how the Cal Bears line up defensively. Jerry Deloach is a guy who has probably been their most consistent down lineman, although they're all very comparable. Siku Senyika has been absolutely brilliant so far. He's the guy who makes all the defensive calls. A lot of pressure on that young man. And Delph O'Neill, who we said will be a presence in this game on both sides of the ball, gets the start at corner today. First down for the Huskies on the 11-yard gain. Single setback, four wideouts, and the pitch this time to Harris, and Harris only gets a yard, maybe two. Peter DiStefano getting a start at the free safety spot. Uh, there was some question as to whether he would start on Damian Marzette as DiStefano a little bit banged up, but he does get the start and makes the tackle. You get a look at the running game for the dogs six times last year in the 97 season Washington went at a hundred yard rusher not once this season it's been a big problem and on the first two offensive plays the dogs featuring the feet of Marcus Tuiasasopo. Tuiasasopo checking off here. Gave him two on first down second and eight big gap this time for Harris and he gets close to the 40 yard line a gain of about eight, maybe seven. The injuries have been such a big factor for Washington early in this 1998 season. They've lost players, starters, at many of the skill positions across the front. Of course, they lost a couple great offensive linemen, a couple All-Americans to the NFL, Benji Olson and Olin Krugs. Third down short, 23 of 70 in third down situation so far this year. Man got back, no flag now, late flag comes in. And I think this may go against the guys in the purple jerseys. Nate Gelderman, maybe, but uh, the Bears think it's against Washington. We'll see. Prior to the snap, offside on the defense, five yard penalty. It is against Nate Gelderman, it'll be against California, and it will give the Huskies a first down. We talked about the fact the Huskies are banged up, and, and here is uh, just how banged up. Look at these skill positions. Brock Hewitt, he's out, although available. Maurice Shaw, he's done. Conniff is done. They're not even using a fullback. They're using an H-back situation when they decide to go that way. Hooker is not available today. And Harris is available, actually. Gerald Harris, although he will not be starting. There's Brock Hewitt on the sideline. Out of the shotgun this time. Tuyasa Sopo throws quickly. It is caught this time. Chris Jurgens, the H-back, for a short game. Well, Arizona bouncing back from uh, a tough loss last week to UCLA, hammering Oregon State. And that's not a bad Oregon State team that they're hammering. UCLA and Oregon hooked up in a terrific ball game so far down in Southern California. with a nice start for Washington. They're featuring his speed, his, his ability to get outside the pocket, and they're doing it with play action passing. Gain of 12 on this play. And a nice little outside move by Jurgens, and the ball is delivered right on the money. Tuiasa Sopo, if you let him get out of the pocket, he can really hurt you. He's very good throwing the football on the run. Good play fake by Tuiasa Sopo on that play, too. Now that Huskies will shift into a double slot. Single setback is Harris. Tuiasa Sopo once again maybe changing the play. Give it to Harris inside. Nothing doing. Albert 
Dorsey led the charge. California's linebackers will make the bulk of the plays defensively. Their down line is uh, outsized to a great extent by the Washington offensive line, but they're very active. And for the first time in five, six, seven seasons, Cal has great talent on defense, and they have it in the linebacking core up front, a very experienced secondary. Second down and 10. Tuyasasoko off the play fake again to throw a comebacker incomplete. They intended for Dane Looker, who was unable to clutch that ball to his chest. Got his hands on it. Seku Sanyika lined up at a defensive end position. He's an outside linebacker. Watch him get rid of the block and come inside. But it was really Carter, Andre Carter, who was coming up the middle to put the pressure on Tuyasasoko. Carter arrived first and the outside nice play by Delta O'Neal breaking on that ball San Yika has really been the big playmaker for Cal this year head coach Tom Homo told us told us yesterday he said San Yika is a guy that's been making big plays every week and that's what you have to have if you're gonna have a dominant defense so it'll be third down and ten now Bears thinking pass of course So far, well, there's the draw plan. It's wide open. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's going to take it all away for a Washington touchdown. 40 yards on the draw play. Bears expected it, but obviously didn't have an answer for it. And you know, it used to be the Washington running game that concerned opposing coaches. yesterday they said we're worried about the long pass from Washington and most importantly the quarterback draw and the scramble by Dewey Asasopo. Sharsinka's try for point wasn't pretty but it got through and it's a seventh to nothing Huskies lead. Well the Bears told us that they expected that draw play to be a weapon for the Huskies. They didn't expect those results. Seven tip dogs. 7-0 ball game off what is a, officially a 39-yard touchdown run by Marcus Tuyasasopo on a wide open draw play. This is the way you draw it up, isn't it, David? It is, and Washington spreads out the defense with four wide outs, and right when Tuyasasopo gets to his depth, watch the linebackers. They're flowing to the outside on their man-to-man -man pass responsibilities, and it leaves the middle wide open for Tuyasasopo. And you cannot turn loose Marcus in the open field. He's too good running the football. Believe me, Tui Asasopo all week long, that's all the Cal coaches talked about. We can't let him get off early. We can't let him hurt us with his great running ability. Eight plays, 79 yards. It took the Huskies three minutes, and they're on top by seven. Skursky to kick it away to Douglas and O'Neill, and an onside kick attempt, and it works. Reggie Davis. Unbelievable execution on an onside kick. This ball is going to be played in the air by Reggie Davis. Washington starting tight end, number five. Beautiful kick by Skursky. Great timing. They catch Cal by surprise. And Washington, once again, you see it so many times, Barry, getting this big active crowd involved early. Well, there wasn't a bear in the picture. So the Huskies right back in business at the 49-yard line of California. Two plays exactly the way you draw them up. They got a bare backfield here. So he has the straight back, throws over the middle, got a man wide open. It's Jurgens, 25-20, knocked out of the 15-yard line. Huskies doing everything right. be a bust in the defensive backfield because Matt back the middle linebacker just lets Jurgens go. Julia Sosopo with nice poise sitting in the pocket. If he delivers a little bit better ball, if he leads Jurgens, Jurgens has gone all the way for a touchdown. Third catch of the game for Jurgens, the H back. First down at the 15. There's coming a blitz and Harris up the middle for a couple. 
Andre Carter and Albert Dorsey on the stop for California. Well, the Bears come in here with a touted defense, and you can see uh, the improvement over the last three years. Last two years, especially largely the same players from 10th to 1st. Yeah, this is huge. First in the Pac-10, and Tom Homo, for the first time in many years, has a talented defense to work with. And Harris, a talented offensive player, takes it to the 4-yard line for a Husky first down. The talent doesn't do you a lot of good if you're not executing. It's a delay, draw, opening up up the middle, and Jason Harris hits it perfectly. A nice block this the center, Brad Hutt, on that play, too. And this Washington offense is really executing. They're doing a great job with formations early, spreading the Cal defense out and hitting them right up the middle. So it'll be first down and goal. Ball marked right between the three and the four Timer yards. Please set the clock at 7.20. 7.20. Harris right now, five carries, 22 yards. Harris is healthy as he's been all year. Jason Harris, a senior. Back up to Maurice Shaw last year. This time, slot left. Harris, the one second left. Two tight ends. Harris again. about all the injuries for Washington offensively this year. The one part of this offense that's been very consistent and has not been hit by injuries is the offensive line, and they're doing a great job early in this game, sustaining on the line of scrimmage, opening up holes, giving Tuiasa Sofo some time in the pocket and on the roll. Two tight ends, two wide outs, single setback once again for the Huskies. Second and goal. Again, stop short. Albert Dorsey stood him up. Would not allow him over the top of the pile. The goal line defense has become linebackers against tailback in the air. I mean, that's what's happened in the 90s, both at the college level and NFL. You line up your linebackers and you try to go and meet that tailback in the air. Nice job by Albert Dorsey filling inside. They do have an option package down here in the goal line. Third and goal. And let's see who that's going to go against. The Bears pointing to Chad Ward, saying it was him. Parker and Wasdorf both came across, and we'll see. Prior to snap, offside, on the defense. Half the distance, still third down. I don't think the Cal Bears were reacting to Chad Ward, the big right guard. I think they were reacting to the shift by the motion man. Tuiasa Sopo goes ahead and he puts Jurgens in motion. See Jurgens shifting, coming back? So it makes it about six inches less to go for Huskies on third down. Tuiasa Sopo is in. Touchdown, Washington. He's out of the blocks quickly today. And Tuiasa Sopo has been the catalyst. This isn't a straight ahead quarterback sneak. He shifts a couple steps to his right, launches in the air. Great athleticism from the quarterback position. Try for point by Jarsika is up and good, and the Huskies lead it 14 to nothing. Five minutes, 37 seconds still remaining to be played in the opening quarter. Washington. Well, the Huskies playing brilliantly on both sides of the ball so far. The defense hadn't, do, hadn't had to do a lot of work, but the offense doing everything right, and it started with this. After the long touchdown run by Tuiasa Sopo, Washington catches Cal by surprise. The Cal return team retreating to set up the return. Perfect onside kick in the air by Skursky, and a nice play by Reggie Davis, number five, the tight end, to make the recovery. Reggie Davis, a guy who has played six different positions in his tenure in Washington. 
Everybody has settled into the tight end spot. And he makes the big play that time on special teams. Give some credit to Coach Lambright. He's been known as a conservative guy, a defensive coach, but nice call on the onside kick, and it was executed to perfection. Skirsky this time pops this one short. And it's got to be handled by the up man who knocked everybody down. Corey Smith will get it back to about the 33-yard line. That was a near disaster for the Bears also. Let's take a look at our John Hancock trivia question. Washington had the most NFL starting quarterbacks on opening day this season. They had four. Can you name them? And there is a hint. One is injured and out for the season. Everybody in this booth is nodding their head. <laughs> I think I can name a couple of those, Barry. Look in there. I know that you can. Tuyasasopo definitely with the talent to play on Sundays in the future. It's in his genes. He's, his dad, of course, Manu Tuyasasopo, many years in the NFL. Better give straight ahead this time to Freeman. Uh, he's stopped right now by Jeremiah Farms. Manu Tuyasasopo, of course, the All-American defensive lineman at UCLA back in the 70s. Second pick overall in the draft to the Seattle Seahawks. What a career his father had both in the colleges and the pro ranks. Absolutely. And he, as a matter of fact, he has a sister. Marcus does, and Manu has a daughter, of course, who's a volleyball player here in Washington, and a pretty good one. Second down nine for the Bears. Better will throw with time. Throws underneath, well short of the first down. Caught by A.J. Kunkel, the tight end, and... Uh, the man in the middle in the white shirt is Doug Cosby. Speaking of guys who spent a little bit of time in the NFL. You get a look at Doug Cosby there, a little reflection in the glass, but talking about great NFL careers. Former All-Pro for the Dallas Cowboys. And a very, people don't remember in that game with the 49ers, the NFC Championship game with Dwight Clark made the big catch. It was Cosby who would put the Cowboys ahead. Four wideouts for the Bears on third down, and somebody got a hand on that. It might have been Burton who got a hand on the ball. I think it was. Big time play by a big time player, Nigel Burton, and the Bears will go three and out. Yeah, this is what happens. If you allow Washington to get on top early, make some big plays, the crowd really becomes a factor. And it can snowball on you in Seattle in a hurry. That's what's happened early in this football game. So Nick Harris will come on to do the punting. He'll be punting to Joe Jarzenka. Jarzinka is uh, a guy that Jim Lambright refers to as the team mascot. He means it in a very affectionate way. This guy was a walk-on, absolute overachiever, and he's got a chance to return this one. At the 20, got a little bit of room, 25-30, and out of bounds the 34-yard line. And that could have been considered a late hit. Let's go back to the John Hancock trivia question. Washington had the most NFL starting quarterbacks on opening day this season. There were four of them. Can you name them? I know that you can. Well, Billy Hobart is the quarterback that's out for the season. Got hurt in the opener, but look at those guys. Moon, unbelievable to be getting it done at the age that he's getting it done right now. And Mark Brunel, probably the brightest young star at quarterback in the NFL. We'll get a look at Brock Heward. He's going to be a big-time player. In fact, I think he'll be the number one quarterback taken in the next year's draft. That'll be interesting, isn't it? Play fake. Tui Asasopo rolls right, throws underneath, and threw it a little bit behind the intended receiver, Jurgens. And Marcus quickly says it was me. California is going to have to be awful careful. They're letting Tui Asasopo escape almost at will outside the pocket. And you've got to maintain the shape of the defense. You've got to have your defensive ends and outside linebackers get upfield, take care of those lanes, and not let Tui Asasopo escape outside. You give him that double threat of throwing the ball or running. Tui Asasopo this time gives to Harris, and he's stopped as he crosses the 35. He got a lot just on pure muscle. We go down to the sideline now. Larry Burnett. Larry, what's up? Well, guys, defense has been a key for Cal all season long, and they've dug themselves a hole here. While the defense was on the sideline, the defensive coaches for Cal were saying, let's eliminate the dumb mistakes. Let's get out there and put the effort out that we've been doing all this season, and let's overcome the obstacle that we've dug for ourselves now, and that's a 14-point deficit. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thanks, Larry. Last week, of course, the Bears came back 21 down in the third quarter, but uh, I don't think you could hope to do that on the road too many times. 
Harris' so far throws wide open out of the backfield this time is Harris, and Harris will have a first down and more close to midfield. Stefano runs him out, but so far, Huskies just uh, have the Bears at bay. Jerry Deloach, the big defensive tackle, coming free on Tui Asasopo, but Marcus just lets it go out on the swing pass. And Harris is a tailback that has great speed. The Washington coaches talked to us yesterday about getting him into the game plan, featuring his speed outside. Nice hookup between quarterback and tailback. So a first down at the 48-yard line. In motion comes Looker to the near side. Give us to Harris, and he stopped immediately as he gets to midfield. And the game we told you about in Los Angeles, what a football game this is. 22 ticks left. Oregon and UCLA and what could be, well, we used to always say it could be the Rose Bowl. In this case, it could be the Fiesta Bowl. Tied at 38. A late score by Oregon. Looks like that game is headed for overtime, and that game not only has Rose Bowl implications, it'll have a lot to do with the national championship chase as well. That's two good football teams playing. And then we've got a couple of good teams playing in this game, too. Trias Sokol throws a little out. Uh, that was a dangerous pass. Intended for Deshisher, and uh, Bears all over that one defensively. Chidi Uwama. Sopo has gotten off to a good start in this game, throwing nice, accurate balls. That ball was thrown late. Just a short five-step out. Got to be careful as a quarterback. You throw a ball behind a wide receiver on a quick out, and that's an invitation for a defensive touchdown the other way. Huskies have done very well in third down situations so far today. They're looking at third and eight now. Out of the shotgun, two yes, Sopo in trouble. going to be a big play. A free safety blitz by Marquis Smith. Great job by Tuya Sosopo to avoid Smith and get the ball off. Yeah, Cal not having a lot of success getting pressure on Marcus Tuya Sosopo early in this football game, so they send the free safety up the gut. Tuya Sosopo still escaping the pressure, and I know he's on the sideline right now thinking he should have made that pass. It was not that tough a throw. Beth O'Neill will be the deep man to receive the punt of Ryan Fleming. Bears show nine-man front. They'll play run back. Fleming drills this one pretty good. O'Neill lets it bounce, and it skips into the end zone. That was nearly an excellent punt. Well, the crowd has been into this ball game, and the reason they have, of course, is that Washington got them in it instantly, and when you do get the crowd into it, as uh, we discussed with Tom Olmo, this place could be tough. The University of Washington at Seattle is one of the toughest um, places to play, maybe in the country. Their fans are so loud. Uh, the dogs get a chance to, you know, come out and, and they're vocal and, and they've been reveling in this for a long time. So I think the fans feed off the players, the players feed off the fans, and it kind of gets to be a frenzied atmosphere. And Vetter throws a pass, which is caught by Joel Young for a gain of about six on first down. Torrey Butler makes the tackle for the Huskies. Just the better stay into the game plan, throwing uh, most everything underneath quick throws. Significantly, Damian Douglas has not touched the ball yet with a minute and 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Better straight back in trouble. And he's dragged down back to the 17 yard. Jabari Issa got off the ball so quickly. He was in the Bears' backfield before Better could set up. And we talked about all the players that Washington lost off their offense. So how about guys like Jason Chorak, the defensive end from a year ago, Tony Parrish. Not quite the talent level, but Jabari Issa up front working alongside Mac Tuiaea. They've been really the impact guys for Husky pressure and we like to call the sack attack. Nice play by Issa right up the gut. Third and 11 for California. They haven't converted a third down play yet today. Again, a fullback draw on that play was uh, poorly scripted right from the get-go. Yeah, 
Issa again makes the stop. The flag is down. That probably is going to be procedure against California. I think. I think it was a dead ball foul, so Cal's going to get another shot here. After that opening drive, a drive in which Cal had a lot of success, play action pass and running the football, the Huskies have really started to clamp down. The Huskies haven't been good so far early in this 98 season on third downs, but Cal offense hasn't been very good either. And 0 for 2 today. And now they're looking at third and 16. Better check him off here. Gives him a draw play again. Nothing doing. Freeman gets across the 15 to about the 17, but he's going to be about 14 yards short of the first down. Lester Towns turns that play in for the Huskies, and they'll get the ball back once again. Yeah, pretty conservative play call by Doug Cosby, the offensive coordinator, but I like it. You have to be patient. Even though you're down two touchdowns, you don't want to get antsy. You don't want to take chances early here against the Huskies. California, number one. Ten people on the field, and that's why the Bears will call that timeout. Tom Homo will say, uh, how many guys we have out there? Well, Jim Lambright has really brought his Husky team back, uh, especially after the Arizona game, a, a game with, which they had. I mean, that game was won. Arizona, in all candor, had no right winning the game. They did everything wrong, except they wound up scoring on the last play of the game, and Jim Lambright uh, had to get his troops rallied after that. It was a tough loss. I'm not real sure I've ever felt more empty after a game than I felt after that, because I really knew that we were going to win up until the final four seconds, and then all of a sudden, the game is over. And it just leaves you, and uh, and you truly have to go into the locker room and regather yourself uh, because you just feel so devastated. Well, he has done that. Well, they have turned things around mentally. Big win last week against Utah State. Not the toughest opponent the Huskies will face, but a great offensive performance. They played well on defense, and looks like the Huskies today are right back on track. Yeah, playing very, very well today. They'll get the ball back now and should get it in pretty good field position. Harris to do the punting, and Huskies play a run back. They just got that kick off. They didn't even try to rush it, John Zinka. Comes up, takes it on a fly, gets it all the way back to the 38-yard line. Great play by Jarzinka, and the Huskies are going to be in business. They will have it at the 37-yard line, a short 33-yard punt. Jarzinka took it and went 11 yards on the return. First quarter belonged to the Huskies. Two touches set up by an onside kick the second time. We're coming back. seen here at Lake, on uh, Lake Washington uh, right by Husky Stadium here another sellout crowd even when the weather's bad it is beautiful up here in these parts Barry Tompkins David Nori Larry Burnett and we have watched Washington dominate through the first 15 minutes of play Dave yeah it has been a dominating performance both defensively and offensively for Washington really the key to Iasa Sopo the quarterback getting off to a hot start for Jim Lambright really getting it done running the football and throwing the football. Nice offensive game plan in the first quarter. Getting Tui Asasopo outside, featuring his mobility. So the first offensive snap of the second quarter starts at the 48-yard line after a dead ball penalty took the Huskies back into their own territory. Give this time is to Harris, gets to midfield. Flag comes in late. It looks like the Huskies are going to get hit with a 15 yarder on a holding call. Take one look at the story in the first quarter. The total yards 139 for Washington. Of course, the big play, the scramble on the quarterback draw by Tuiasa Sopo, and they cash All in with two touchdowns. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Bears uh, 
of course, had that 61 yards, as you see, but 39 of them came on one play. So really, 22 yards over and above that one play. Cal was unable to cash in on that drive. Discussions continue amongst the officials here. As we are now set to go, and this time the Huskies will snap it at their own 38 yard line. up front to create that hole for Harris. Yeah, great work up front by the Husky offensive line. Watch inside here as the offensive line gets some great push. It's going to be a delayed draw. Both guards in the center laying jersey on jersey. Still first down. That's a great delay and it's going to be it's going to come back though. 19 yard gain will be nullified as Husky is going to be penalized yet another time. That's the only thing that's been able to stop them so far. The Bears have not. Yeah, another penalty on Washington. Lambright can't be happy, but he has to be excited about the work up front of his offensive line. There's one storyline that's emerging in this football game. Washington is dominating the line of scrimmage. So now it's going to back up to the 33-yard line. slot this time for the Huskies. There's been everybody up on the line of scrimmage here. Harris is stopped immediately by Andre Carter. Andre Carter, of course, came to California as one of the most uh, highly recruited athletes to uh, sign a letter of intent. His dad, of course, a NFL veteran and now a coach at the University of Maryland. He's been hampered by an ankle injury. In fact, he missed the USC game a week ago and rotating with Jeremiah Parker at that defensive end position. As you mentioned, Barry, when he's healthy, he can be a nightmare rushing the quarterback. So it's going to be second down now at 25. Three of us so far will throw off the play. Fake that's a wide open decision. At the 45 to the 41 yard line, first down Huskies. got just enough. Now this is a wonderful play. Desisher is going to come all the way across the field and watch the patience of Marcus Tuiasosopo and the accuracy as he lets Desisher come open. He steps up into the pocket. Great footwork, an accurate throw. Desisher working against Iwoma, the cornerback. That's just a beautiful play by Tuiasosopo in the pocket. And that's a big first down. Right at the 41-yard line. Here's the option. Tuiasa Soko on the keep. Hurdles a man. Flag down. And Tuiasa Soko gets it to the 26, but this may come back. Tuiasa Soko creates such a problem for defenses with his ability to run the football. And when you combine a quarterback at the college level with a talented throwing arm and the ability to run the football as well as Tui Asasopo does, it can create just huge problems for a defensive coordinator. Well, this one's coming back. Now, nothing has deterred the Huskies. They were looking at a third and 25. Promptly picked up 26. On the offense, 15 yards penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. This is an illegal block below the waist. See if we can pick it up. Tuiasa Sopo coping up on the option. And there's a crack block. It's Dane Looker, number 80. You can't come from a wide receiver position inside and make a block below the waist. And that's what Looker did. In Los Angeles, Oregon unable to score on the first possession of overtime. The Bruins get three from Sailor. Game over. Bruins win. Sosopo back to the first and 21. Give it to Harris. Got about two. And one of the
of the problems with Washington this year is they have been unable to uh, to make the big plays as they have been in the past. But uh, as we mentioned earlier, with all the absence of all five of their skill position players, uh, that would certainly account for it. They've had some pretty good running backs here. They had Dylan. They had Sheehy. Yeah, they, they not only have been hurt with the with the injuries. How about the players they lost off of last year's team? Payton, Coleman, Sheehy, two great tight ends in Kissel and Cleveland. Straight back to Yasisopo looking deep going for Looker. And Looker was the only guy who was looking. Derek Gardner never did look back for the ball, and Looker almost came around him and made that catch. Looker was working on a deep fade route down the field against Derek Gardner and now this is just inexperience at the quarterback position. Tuiasa Sopo is going to learn that if you're going to throw the deep fade, you got to get the ball up early. And Looker working desperately to try to get back to that ball, but the pass was thrown a good, underthrown a good four or five yards. It's going to be third down and 19. Huskies with eight first downs today. Third and long and Bob for very much. Three or four third downs. Should be dropped back at the 47 yard line by Matt Beck. So maybe a bit of a confidence builder for the California defense here, although they got a lot of help from the guys in the striped shirts. Yeah, Cal's going to have to really keep an eye on Tui Asasopo, especially in third and long and second and long situations because they're locked up man to man on the outside in the secondary. That's a perfect time for Tui Asasopo to pull the football down and hurt Cal. Solid job by Beck on that last play, keeping containment on the outside. So the Bears will get it back. Delpho O'Neill stands at about the 14-yard line, Fleming to do the punting for the Huskies. Twisting kick that Fleming turns over. O'Neill, 10, tried to bounce it outside, nothing doing. He has stopped right where he received the ball. Reggie Davis, who's been the man on special teams so far today for the Washington Huskies. 10.58 left first half. Huskies by 14. Welcome back. Just under 11 minutes left in the first half. And as you can see, the sun's starting to break through the clouds here. The rains have stopped. As we look at the Pac-10 standings, California in a situation now. They can be the masters of their own fate. Should they go on and come back from this two-touchdown deficit, they will play UCLA next week. And that would be a game that would be a battle for first place in the Pac-10. But they got to think about first things first. And so far, the Huskies have dominated. Fields got what he could, which was about two. The Bears have been unable to run the football. And uh, since that first series, they haven't been able to throw it very well either. And it was critical that Cal didn't capitalize on that early possession because the Washington game plan in Seattle with their defense is to play eight men on the line of scrimmage. An eight-man defensive front. They want to get you down early, and then they just want to shut down your running game and attack the quarterback. It's done by design. It's very tough to come back against this Husky team here in Seattle. Split backs this time with Mohammed in the ball game for the first time. Better straight back in trouble and wrapped up, and down he goes, and I mean hard, back to the nine-yard line. Marcus Hairston coming on the blitz. Yeah, Harrison ends up getting the sack, but this is just a party in the backfield for Washington. Look at the penetration up front. Jeremiah Farms, number four outside. Tui Aiea. Lester Towns down low. And Marcus Harrison taking him high along the pad level. And this is turning into a nightmare for veteran her. Yeah, that was a jailbreak that time. Nobody taking care of business. Third and long. Better straight back. Throws down the middle of the field, and he just threw it as far as he could throw it, and even then the man was covered. Intended for Ronnie Davenport, well covered by Nigel Burton. Huskies will get it back. Bears got to give it up. They're dead in the water, and the Huskies got it all going. Now, even though the Huskies have a 14-point lead for the first time, this crowd starting to liven up. It's going to be a very tough assignment for Better to bring this Cal team back because he's not getting helped out by much of a running game, Barry. Keep in mind, too, the Huskies almost blocked the punt by Harris the last time without really putting on a punt rush. Harris gets this one away, a line drive kind of kick. And Jarzinka, they're going to be flagged against California. Might not matter. 
batter, Jarzik at the 35 and out of bounds. The Bears didn't give Jarzik enough room to catch the football. Nonetheless, he caught it and turned it into a big game. Chidi Awoma got to Jarzink a little bit early and really not going to matter much. A great play by, by Jarzink to take that ball on the fly. Interference with the opportunity to make a catch. Five-yard penalty on the kicking team. First down. So that'll be tacked on to the end of the run, and the Huskies are going to be back in business, leading by two touchdowns and threatening once again. Scene is for a moment you saw a glimpse of a rainbow here over Lake Washington. Play fake, flag down, Turias Sopo to throw, does so, caught this time by Reggie Davis, the tight end, but it may come back. The only thing that's stopping the Huskies so far is the Huskies. Yeah, this may come back, but what a throw by Turias Sopo. For a right hander moving to his left. He laid that ball right Disregard the, the flag. There's 10 players on the offense. Seven were on the line of scrimmage. Well, how do you like that? They're beating Cal with 10 guys. Tui Asasopo once again showing some nice patience, waiting for tight end Davis to come open on the crossing route. There wasn't much room to fit that ball in. That was an impressive throw. And you, you know, we talked to Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator for Washington yesterday. He said, I have been very impressed with the improvement by Marcus over the last two weeks throwing the football. It's so really shown today. Doing everything right. Here's a delay for Hurst, and he'll be thrown for a loss of about two. And we go to the sideline. No loss here. Here's Larry Burnett. Well, Tuiasa Sopo doing a good job throwing the ball. Not bad for a guy who only threw 75 passes uh, during his entire senior year in high school. Brock Ewart has been talking to him a lot on the sidelines. Actually, he was the first one to get to Tuiasa Sopo after that first touchdown run. He talked to him during the last uh, time when the offense was on the sidelines, too. And the more the uh, Huskies keep rolling, the more Ewart doesn't have to come into the game, and the more Washington likes that. They don't want to play Ewart if they don't have to. All right, thanks, Larry. The way Ewart was holding his arm right there, it looked like his shoulder might still be hurt. I'm not trying to play doctor, but he was supporting that shoulder. So he has to sell both throws for the first out of the backfield, makes a nice catch, but he's not going anywhere. He's going to lose yards back to the 22. Albert Dorsey turns that one in. Matt Beck was blitzing from his inside linebacker position, and he anticipated the snap, maybe a count too early. The line judge was reaching for his flag and at the last second said, no, nah, I'm going to keep the laundry in my pocket. But California trying to pull some tricks out of their bag, doing some blitzing. They're getting beat up front. And to turn things around on defense, you've got to make adjustments. You've got to go to the blitz. You've got to get some more defenders committed to stopping the run game. Bears with six defensive backs, four wide receivers, and now a flag before the play starts. will move the Huskies five yards further back. I think this was early move. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's a big boost for Cal, and it has to be disappointing for Jim Lambright. Early penalties, a backer in this game for Washington, slowing the Huskies down a little bit, but far they've been able to overcome those types of mistakes. Well, he's got a young football team, and uh, he said, I really like this team. He's enjoying every minute of this season, despite the fact that thus far it's not been his most successful season. And once again, whistles blow before the play. Timeout, California, number two. Bears are trying to juggle players on and off the field, and uh, as such, they are forced to call a timeout. So will we. 7.35 remaining first half. Huskies by 14. Just about midway through the second quarter, Huskies clinging to a 14-0 lead. They have dominated the ball game on both sides of the line of scrimmage thus far. They have dominated California the past 15 times that they have played each other. California won it back in uh, 1976. You were a mere puppy. Yeah, I was, and, and the majority of the California Bears players were not even alive during that last win back in 1976. So California trying to stem the tide in a rivalry that has really not gone their way. Third down, 21. Well, the 
Huskies. There's going to put everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Two hits to so close great back. He's got a little time. He's got a lot of time this time. He finally throws a comebacker that's dropped by Deshishur at about the 11-yard line. It was going to be short of the first down anyhow. Well, that's a deep comeback route. Two Yasa Sopo was trying to hook up on. And, you know, one thing that really jumps out at me in this football game is the work of the offensive line for the Huskies. The work up front has been unbelievable, both giving some room to the running backs and especially giving Two Yasa Sopo time. I mean, he was sitting back there on that last play just counting the house. Well, they are not going to go for a field goal. Fourth and 21, they're going to go. They've had fourth and 17 twice this year, made it both times. Once it won a game. Tuyasa Sopo straight back, flags ball, dead ball, penalty once again. Yeah, there's going to be a penalty here, maybe on Cal for having 12. Timeout, minutes. University of California, third and final timeout. Well, the Bears just can't get it right. That's a good call on your part, though, David. They had too many men on the field. Uh, you can't get it right with 12 players on the football field, and this has not been a pretty first half for Tom Homo and the Cal Bears. So Tui Asasopo will talk it over with his coach, and yesterday we had an opportunity to talk it over with his coach as well about him. Marcus Tui Asasopo is uh, a perfect fill-in for Brock. He reaches for leadership. He's a tremendous backup quarterback as far as being supportive of the starter, yet when he moves in, he is ready. Well, he has been ready today. There's no question about it. He had a 39-yard touchdown run. He's run the ball four times for 42 yards in the ball game thus far. And has completed eight of 14 passes for 110 yards. He's doing everything right. Yeah, nice numbers, nice accuracy from the pocket. Remember Tuyasa Sopo a year ago really emerged on the scene with his first chance against Nebraska here in Seattle and played very well in that football game, threw for over 200 yards. I mean, you're looking at a guy that's going to be a star down the line in the Pac-10. That guy he was just talking to, incidentally, uh, was a pretty good quarterback here at Washington as well. Kerry Conklin and Kerry back on the coaching staff now coaching the receivers. Kerry Conklin uh, still owns some records in the Washington passing charts. Of course, he was a starter in the late 80s for Washington. Double slot this time on fourth down and 21. Sosopo in trouble. He's blasted. Loose ball. Still a loose ball. It's picked up by Hurston. And he's got a little room he can get the ball. This is rugby, folks. I think we're going to have a scrum. <laughs> Looks like Cal recovered. Oh, and a fourth down play wouldn't make any difference, but entertaining, wasn't it? Well, we got a sign from the side judge that Cal had recovered the fumble. I'm not sure if that's going to hold up, and the, the officials are meeting. But let's watch the rush here. From the outside to Benio, getting there early, forcing the fumble. Looks like Wasdorf arrived there, too. And look at the ball, just loose. Bears are going to have to try to do some business here, and here's the business they've done in the second quarter, Dave. No first downs and a total of minus one yards. Yeah, not on fourth not. down, forward and out of bounds. It will be returned to the spot of the foul. First down and ten for the University of California. Yeah, it well, doesn't really matter whether they recover the fumble there because it's a fourth down play, and of course, you can't fumble the ball forward on a fourth down and pick up a first down. has not touched the ball yet today. Yeah, Tom Homo on the sidelines trying to figure out a way with his offensive coordinator, Doug Cosby, to integrate Douglas into this football game. He's really the go-to guy and the threat that they can get Cal back in this football game. And from what I can see, too, the Huskies are not doing anything fancy with Douglas. Josh Smith makes the tackle on fields and uh, no gain on first down. So the Bears just absolutely coming up empty been able to throw it and they haven't been able to run it and that uh, has a tendency to bog your offense now yeah, when you can't run the football against this husky defense you better make some plays in the outside and cal has not been able to shake loose any of their wideouts belt o'neill in the ball game he lines up in the slot in the double slot better straight back throws for o'neill too far better just got to the ball right now that 
that time, I think he might have been able to hold it for another second. Well, what Cal's trying to do here is they're trying to spread out the Washington defense. They're going with four wides and Vetter hoping to take a few defenders out of the box. So the Bears looking at another third down. They have not converted a third down play yet today. If you have a defense playing an eight-man front against you, one way to take that defense apart is to spread that defense out and take some of those defenders out to the outside, but still Washington having success with pressure. Better straight back throws, caught by Douglas, first down California. Well, as you said, David, uh, when they find that man, good things have a way of happening. Yeah, this is an impressive throw by Justin Vetter on the out route. He's working against Renard Edwards. Actually, Wanda Mee Davis is the cornerback that Douglas is working against here. And he just does get that throw off. Getting set in the pocket. The ball delivered perfectly to the outside. That's a big play for Cal's offense. First first down of the second quarter. They give it to Fields, trying to get outside, and uh, he's running over people. That's going to be enough for a first down across midfield into Washington territory, just short of the 45. Marcus Fields is a guy that you get him going. He's very talented. He's not a flashy back, but he's big. And he runs with those shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. Look at him breaking tackles and fighting forward for that first down. And taking on Brendan Jones, a free safety. Cal has to have a running game. They have to run the ball at least somewhat successfully to take the pressure off Justin Better at quarterback. They've had two runs over 10 yards in this game. But between those two runs, there's been very little. Fake better will throw, ducks under a tackle, but can't duck under the second one, and is dropped for a loss once again by Odell George. Yeah, Tui Iaia, the defensive tackle, almost took Justin Better's head off. Now this is coming from the blind side. See, Better's looking out to his right. Tui Iaia comes open up the middle. George cleans up, but definitely Tui Iaia was the one that made that play in the backfield for Washington. So second and long once again for the Bears. Incidentally, John Romero, who is nicked up, is not in the ball game now. Caleb Brown is playing center. Mark Oliver in at a running back spot for California. Straight back better. Held on the ball that time. Uh, probably longer than he should have, but once again, credit the coverage of the Washington Huskies. Nigel Burton uh, in the midst of an excellent ball game, and as we said, he's playing on a sore wheel. Nigel is our GTE Scholar Athlete of the Week. Uh, Nigel with a 3.33 in business administration. He has been an all-academic Pac-10 conference player of the last year. And does well in the classroom and does pretty darn well on the football field as well. Third and long once again for the Bears. They might get a free one, but they're not going to let the play go on. That's going to go against the Huskies, I believe. And Jabari Issa. The defensive tackle for Washington moving into the Dead neutral ball, zone. Ball start on the offense. Well, Five yard penalty, still third down. So and much for a drawn break. off. Yep. Exactly. And got Tom Homo on the sidelines. This has not been a good first half. A little over five minutes to go. Nothing has gone right for Cal. What Cal has to do is they have to take the pressure off Justin Vetter. Bears come with a double slot. They bring Douglas into the slot to the left side. He's covered right now by a linebacker, Johnson. Better straight back, throws for Douglas, and that should be interference. But I don't see a flag. It sure looked to me like Johnson had his hand all over his back. Yeah, that did look like Johnson made a grab just before the ball got there. Let's get another look at that. I want to be proven wrong on this. Now four wide outs. Once again, they spread the field man to man on the outside, and there's that, that's a that's a, a play that should be called. That's interference. That's pass interference all the way. Absolutely. So the Bears will punt it away. Harris to do the punting. Ten man front shown by the Huskies, and Harris uh, gets a lot under this. Good hang time. Jones in the back of the eight yard line.
snapping sound you just heard might possibly be the back of the Cal Bears. Jar Zink is going to take this ball inside his own 10 yard line. A return man's taught not to take it inside the 10, but Jar Zink, a guy who's always looking to make things happen. Some decisive cuts. Look at this burst of speed right up the gut. And the cut right up the middle eludes a tackle. This guy's been so exciting to watch. He's returned punts now for three years for Washington. They've inserted him as a field goal kicker. Playing the H back, a former wide receiver. Look at him getting involved down there in the dog pound. Working the room. And he steps up and drills an extra point. Jarzik had two field goals a week ago. Stepping in for Skursky. What a turnaround. You know, third down conversion situation for Cal Berry. Apparent pass interference call. It's not called. And then Washington cashes in with a 91-yard punt return for a touchdown. Unbelievable. Special teams for California coming just short of disaster. They gave up, of course, an 80-yard return to R.J. Soward of Southern California last week. They also had a kick blocked. Now the 91-yard punt return. And Washington was so excited that their kickoff team just lined up on the wrong side of the field. <laughs> Referee had to say, hey, guys, come on down to this end. And Attack in the wrong way. Well, the Bears were looking at the possibility, at least, of putting points on the board, trailing just 14 to nothing, and getting into halftime with less than a two touchdown deficit. Just like that, they come up empty. The Huskies score on the 91 yard kick return, and the Bears are down three touchdowns. Fair catch on the kick, not a bad idea. Bears will start at the 27-yard line. Jarzinka now 140 yards of all-purpose yardage. And by the way, nice play by Corey Smith on the return team for Cal. People don't know this, but on a kickoff, you can use a fair catch signal, and on those high pooch kicks on the kickoff, Corey Smith knows to protect himself and to protect the football by making the fair catch signal. for Justin Better. It's been a very slow first half. He's made a couple good plays and he's got to get to work immediately. Cal's got to get a score here going in, create some sort of momentum and, you know, Cal's not going to get it done with the running game. They're going to have to go to the pass, quick drops and get the football out of the pocket quick. There's the 10 guys on the line of scrimmage for the Huskies. Better's got no place to go. I mean no place to go. linebacking position. He's not really a linebacker. He plays in a down three-point stance. He's going to come on the snap of the ball. It's an outside move, and he's man-to-man -man on Marcus Fields, tailback. In a pass protection, you don't want to have a tailback blocking a defensive end, and that's what happened on that play. Fourth sack of the day. They had 13 last week. What a catch by Douglas. That's a great grab by Douglas. Yeah, good throw, unbelievable catch. And you talk about being on the ropes. Cal needed this play. Five-step drop. The plant gets the ball out quickly. Now look at Douglas laying out on this catch. You won't see a better catch at the college level on an out route than the catch that Douglas just made. Great play by Damian Douglas. And the Bears again. John, I think it was the center, actually, uh, who is Caleb Brown. As you said, John Romero uh, not playing at the moment. I think he started the game, but he is not out there. Dead the ball, illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. There is, this is what happens. Uh, you know, I, as, a, as a quarterback, an opposing quarterback to the Huskies, I've come into Seattle before. It's the toughest assignment that you can have at the quarterback position in the Pac-10. Controlling things at the line of scrimmage with this crowd, the noise, the aggressiveness of the defense, and Cal is really showing it. They're not settled on the line of scrimmage. A lot of penalties here in the first half. John Romero is playing. So is Caleb Brown. There's a 
little slant from Douglas again to the 45-yard line of the Huskies. Plenty of time, over three minutes. Cal really needs to cash in. And they're starting to get things clicking with the, with the passing game. But a much better job for Homo here in the last two possessions, protecting the quarterback just in better. So they're right back to uh, where they were. Harrison is going to be guilty of the penalty. We'll have to wait and see. One thing's for sure, Harrison really laid a Pass lick on better. On the defense, ball will be put at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, Harrison was putting a push on better. He had better wrapped up, and I think the penalty is going to go against one to me Davis. Now Douglas is going to have to make some big plays. He was a guy last week down in Los Angeles against USC that really made things happen for Cal. Bears are going to get a first down. Let's watch as Douglas working at the bottom of the screen. Better throwing the quick slam. That's a good call. It's a good call, but it wasn't as flagrant as the one that they didn't call a little bit earlier. That's right, but it doesn't need to be flagrant. You just need contact while the ball's in the air, and Wanda B. Davis is hit with the penalty. Better going deep this time, and unable to catch up to it was Piper's bird. And now another flag comes in. I'll tell you what, that's a good flag. The Huskies are getting away with a lot of grabbing when the ball in the air. And I, let me correct myself, David. It was Curran and not Pipersburg. Yeah, Sean Curran. I think this is Wanda B. Davis once again. Half interference on the defense. 15 yards penalty. Automatic first down. And the crowd doesn't like this one, but it's absolutely the right call. Better thrown to the outside man on a streak route. Watch the grabbing at the end. From another angle, there's that hand play. The left hand by Davis. It strikes me as a payback call. <laughs> you know what, though? All the way down the sideline, Davis was doing some grabbing. At the end, there wasn't much contact. I still stick by it. I think it was a good call. That's your story, and you're sticking by it. I have to. <laughs> First down, Bears to 26. Brown really into a short drop hitter. Caught by Young. Inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, one to be Davis makes the stop. You know, Cal got a break on that pass interference call, so be it, because just before the Charzinka return. Right, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's a lot of contact, so I think those things tend to even out. you got to make your own breaks, especially in Seattle. It's a hometown crowd. The Huskies always get a call or two. You've got to be able to overcome that. That's, that's called the big home field advantage. Better starting to put some numbers up, as you saw. Here comes a blitz. Better in trouble. First man to him that time. And Washington secondary has been hit with a couple flags. Ron, on this play, they do a great job of coverage in the secondary. The better's got to know, even if he's facing pressure, on a three-step drop, you can't wait that long. You've got to have a clock going in your head, and that ball's got to come out of there. Justin Better's just got to throw that ball out of the back of the end zone. You can't take a five-yard loss in this situation, trailing by 21 points. Double slot once again. Better straight back. Late blitz coming. Steps up, he's got room, he can run. At the 15, trying to take it inside to the five to the two yard line. And that'll be a bear first down. Nigel Burton makes the stop. And I think it was Douglas who might have helped him with a great block downfield. There he is. Yeah, Douglas was working hard blocking downfield for his quarterback, laying everything on the line. But this is a heroic play by Justin Better. It could have been a penalty on Burton going to the face mask with a hand there. But a great job of breaking a tackle and a decisive move to pull the football down by Justin Better. And they mark it at the one-yard line, first and goal for California. A nice play by Burton to make the tackle and save the touchdown. They give it to the fullback. Freeman is in. Touchdown, Bears. Crowd doesn't like it. The uh, crowd doesn't like it because they felt that drive was kept alive a couple times by penalty. There's a few folks from Berkeley down here. Cheerleaders like it. Cal 
desperately needed that score to get back in this football game. They go into the locker room down 21 nothing. It's an awfully bleak picture for the Cal Bears. A nice drive by Justin Better, and he's facing a lot of heat in the pocket, but he made some nice plays, both throwing the football and pulling it down. ACO Brock game will try the extra point. Gets it up and through, and it is a 21-7 ball game. And uh, now you start to think about things. They have the 91-yard punt return. Huskies put 14 on the board in the first quarter, and uh, the Bears ever so slowly started to creep back into it. Yeah, see, the, the contact on the pass interference call came early there, just before the separation by Curran and Wandamie Davis. And, and that was a nice shot. That was a nice shot from downstairs in the truck to pick that up. It was definitely pass interference with the grabbing going on on the sideline. And then the touchdown straight up the middle. Nice surge by the offensive line for Cal. Well, coming up at halftime, uh, Tui's legacy. And a wonderful story it is for uh, Marcus Tui Asasopo. Told you a little bit of it earlier, and you'll hear more at halftime. We'll have the scores of all the top 10 teams and the highlights and stats from our own game. Butler and Jarzinka will be the deep men for California. Take a look at the Buick scoring drive. Nine plays, 73 yards, 329. Better uh, when he has even an instant. I don't want to say time, but an instant. Made good, and again, they got the ball where they needed to get it, which is in the hands of Douglas. At the three-yard line, this is Burton or Harris. And again, they break it. It was Torrey Butler. Ball is fumbled. The Bears have it. And they're going to say ground caused the fumble, a near disaster. After a brilliant run, they're going to say it is Cal's ball. If there's a more beautiful city in America, I would like to see it. Seattle at dusk, 21-7 lead. All is well for the Washington Huskies despite that last turnover. Bears have got to show that they can move the ball. Adrian Douglas in motion. He's not touched the ball in the second half. Better wrapped up, dropped. They get 12 sacks. Jeremiah Farms was right in Better's face. Let's take a look at the fumble. Freeze it right there. This is Chris Lang, the tight end, blocking against San Yik, and San Yik is just going to come to the outside and make him fan. I mean, not a real good effort by Lang to get body on body, and San Yik with that great speed and aggressive play to the outside kicks the ball loose. No problem. Cal's going backwards again. Second and 16. Pesky's defense. Sensational. Slam, unable to hold on to it is Douglas. I mean, the ball's there right now. Last week in the fourth quarter, Justin Better got it all going. As you see, 9 of 11 as his team came back from a 31 to 10 deficit to defeat USC. Biggest win in years for the California program. But uh, will there be any such magic today? conversions in the third and 16 right here. Everybody coming. They throw it out and again Douglas ran it out. Better was thinking that he was going to run a fly and the end result is going to be a California punt. And Washington is just bringing inside linebackers at will and forcing Better to get the ball up early and a nice job on the outside. See Burton's not giving Douglas a lot of room. He's playing him physical off the line of scrimmage. It's tough for a quarterback to coordinate with his wide receiver if he doesn't get a clean release, and Douglas did not on that third down play. So Harris, the punter that we put in, is Jarzinka, who has the biggest play of this game. He's got another chance. Line drive kick. Jarzinka at the 30, steps outside to the 35, and the 40, to the 42. <laughs> How about this guy? He's a crash test pilot. <laughs> Team mascot, that's what Jim Lambright calls him. He's more than that today. He picked his team up and carried it a little bit.
there's my player of the game, Joe Jarzinka. Why not? All he's done is get 162 return yards, including a 91-yard touchdown, kick three extra points. He's the difference in the game, Dave. Yeah, he, he, he has been the difference, and it's, you know, just no fear in the face of a coverage team. He's made some great plays making catches on punt returns where, you know, the, the average punt return guy wouldn't even make the catch, and he'd give up 20 to 30 yards of field position. He's not only made the catches and not given a field position, he has a 91-yard punt return for a touchdown, among others. Position for the dogs at the 42 yard line. Straight back, short drop to Yasasopo. Picked! Harris with the pick, knocked out at the nine yard line. And again, the California defense puts the offense in a situation where they can do some business. And you know, conservative football fans might ask with seven minutes and 45 seconds to go, why are you throwing in this situation? You have great field position. Why tempt disaster? That's an unbelievable one-handed interception by Dre Harris. And he read the play all the way. Reggie Davis, the tight end, gets back and makes the tackle. But all of a sudden, Cal has new life. If they score here, it's a brand new football game. nothing. And Marcus Oliver had some room up to the inside. He did not hit the crease there. That was an off-tackle play, and a seam opened up to the inside, and he didn't follow it. Nice play by Josh Smith and Marcus Harrison closing things down off-tackle, off but not a good job of running the football down near the goal line. blame him. Yeah, this is just a, a roll, a planned sprint out to the left. Beautiful ball. That's a good call. He did not break the plane. That's right. His foot was in the end zone. The ball was. Well, on that angle, it looks like it was. No, nah, but we had a great angle on that on that shot before. And, and he definitely did not get in. A great call by the field judge on the goal. So less than a yard. Interesting taking another look at this third down run by Freeman, the fullback. This is just a straight ahead give off the left side behind the guard. That's they, another good call. Yes, it is. I have to tell you, that's a that's a great call. It looked like he had broken the plane, but he did not. Well, the ball right on the goal line. The pressure goes on the California offensive line. They'll call it time. I'm assuming this is California that's calling the timeout. It's Washington that calls the timeout. We'll take one, two. 6.33 remaining, 14-point lead Huskies. Here's the story. 6.33 remaining fourth quarter. Washington, as it was at the end of the first half, ahead 21-7. to seven. Dre Harris with a big interception, and now the Bears with the nose of the football literally on the goal line with one snap left. As well he should. Cal's defense has kept the offense in the game, and the offense just been unable to produce. Yeah, and that, that one is 100% on Justin Vetter. 
when you see the football come up and hit the quarterback in the Hill chest. batting on the offense at the 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Lost him down. First down. That's an easy call. Better tried to bat the ball forward. You have to give him credit trying to save the day there. But the ball came up, hit him in the chest. And what that means is the quarterback did not keep his hands together. And he can't advance a fumble ball. And that's what Better did. And it's going to cost him 15 yards. It's really adding insult to injury because at least you would have had the Huskies deep in, the own in their own territory. Yeah, see the ball come up. Better didn't keep his hands together. He was pulling out a little bit quickly. He's going to get back and try to make something out of nothing. He's going to bat the ball forward. They call that an illegal forward pass. You can't advance a fumble either. And that's just California has had so many opportunities in this game on Washington's side of the field, and they have not produced. Only seven points to show. Yeah, and we asked the question at the very beginning of this program was the offense that California showed in the second half against USC in which they scored three touchdowns in aberration, and I think we've answered it. Yes. So now the Huskies at the 20-yard line. And they give straight ahead to Hurst to stop. Now the clock, of course, is a factor, and uh, Washington will try to control that as much as possible. Still time for Cal, but you know they have to they have to have a three and out right here, and then they have to go to work exclusively throwing the football beyond the chains. It isn't, this isn't the NFL, so when you when you get a first down, the clock stops, and that gives the team plenty of time to come back. But I just don't know if California can come back from the adversity that they've created for themselves. Second down and ten. again by the Bears Matt Beck coming hard Scott Linehan the offensive coordinator for Washington showing me a little riverboat gambler mentality after that big pick by Dre Harris a pick that looked to get Cal right back in the football game you want to run some clock you want to bleed that clock take as much time off 30 35 seconds at a crack and the problem with throwing the football is you risk an interception number one number two incomplete pass stops the clock for Cal to get the job done, and why not? It's gotten the job done. The Bears are going to take their first time out. 21-7 to ball game. Huskies over the Bears. 5-24. Now the clock's still ticking. Why? Someday there will be no subway. has not uh, swathed himself in glory tonight. Illegal block in the back during the return. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Well, Delta O'Neal is the best athlete on the field for Cal, but he has made two huge mistakes in the second half. The fumbled punt, and you just don't do this. You don't retreat and give up yardage, especially in the big situation, five minutes to go down 14 points he not only loses yardage but he puts his return team in a position to make an illegal block and Delpho O'Neill cost his team about 30 yards on that play defense will just try to tee off on better Phillipsburg can't hang or Pipersburg rather can't hang on to that pass as again better has to unload it watch the last drive 
Uh, the roll to the left, Damian Douglas trying to get the ball across the goal line, does not. Third down run by Freeman, the big fullback. Doesn't get it into the end zone. And then on fourth down, Vetter fumbles the exchange from the center. The utter frustration for Cal. Second down and 10. Four-man rush this time. Vetter throws, incomplete, and almost intercepted. One to me, Davis, saying, throw one to me. Well, Vetter just on a little quick hitch route to Pierre. He's lucky to get this back. The end zone view, three-step drop, which is all you can really do against this blitzing defense to get the ball off. Ball deflects up off of Pierre. Wanamie Davis. How many times have we called his name? He's been so active over the course of this game. Almost came up with an interception. Three out of 14 in third down situations. And again, the Huskies rattle the Bears and they jump. That's Langston Walker. Now check that. That's John Wellborn. Dead ball, false start, on the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Look at these penalties, 22 penalties in this ball game, 200 yards. Yeah, that's, that's ugly. And, and John Wellborn, the left tackle, is the most experienced member of this Cal offensive line. You're going to have problems in, in front of this crowd with the noise, but, but not to that degree. That, that's not excusable. So Vetter will throw on third down, throw deep for Douglas. Douglas can't hang on. Well covered by Burton. And the frustration for California continues. Now he's watching the defensive backs play so aggressive on the outside barrier. That, like we mentioned, they, they got flagged times in the in the first half but a lot of hand play a lot of physical action going on downfield and, and, and it's a great way to play because at the college level it's only a 15 yard penalty it's a, not a spot of the foul call like in the NFL so smart play by the, the secondary of Washington and another chance for Joe Jarzinka high twisting kick Jarzinka backs up to the 35 yard line starts to the near sideline and this time is dropped Turn. Chidi Wama makes the stop for California. George Zinka, fair catch is not in his vocabulary. Well, the pads have come back. How do you like this? Five to two, Padres over the Yankees. Top half of the fifth inning, so the batters uh, having their way in this first game of the World Series. How about the Padres? I mean, they've been a great story, haven't they? Tony Gwynn and Greg Vaughn picking up homers in game one of the World Series. They've been a terrific story. Everybody thought the Braves were going to walk over the pods, but San Diego facing the Yankees. There's a delay this time to Hurst, and Hurst stopped right about the line of scrimmage. But now the clock, of course, is all the ally of the Washington Huskies. Peter DiStefano makes the stop. Two good defensive teams out there today, but... Uh, the offense belonging to the Huskies. Husky band, they're excited. That's your traditional college band. Isn't it? to take a break uh, with the Bears. That is their first official timeout. They didn't uh, count the other one because it was a penalty call. We're coming back. Three fifty-three remaining in this one. Huskies, as they did at halftime, leading 21 to 7 and looking at the third down. And the Huskies have been that much more efficient on third downs than California has. Five of 14 for the Dogs. Three of 15 for the Bears. Hope here on a third and eight is to get the ball back to their offense, utilize their timeouts, and have a 
have time for an onside kick after scoring. That's her only hope. Again, the Huskies will have to give up the football. And the Bears are going to take their second time out. You know, it's the little things at the University of Washington that it's made the Huskies the, the number one program during the 90s. You talk about the 72 wins in the 90s, just little things like Jurgens taking that pass on the outside, not going out of bounds, keeping the ball in bounds, and forcing Cal to burn a timeout. This, this probably, you know, year in and year out, is as solid a coaching staff and as solid a fundamental team as you'll find on the West Coast and, and maybe in the country. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Well, uh, as we've said, Jim Lambright has been around this program for a long time. He's a native of this area. He's very embedded. He gets out into the community and does it. He's just a good guy, and I've had a chance to be around him a whole lot. And I mean he's a good guy not only as a football coach but as a human being talked about how much he loves this team and uh, this is a very young team I think this team is going to make a lot of noise even before the end of this year yeah, I, I think they're, they're going to be right in the thick of the Pac-10 racing at that big second week of November game against UCLA here at home at the doghouse and Barry I have tremendous respect for Jim Lambright and his program let's take a look at how the uh, nation's top ranked teams did today uh, four more undefeated teams uh, fell by the wayside Ohio State easy over Minnesota that game literally was over before it was over UCLA had to go to overtime K-State is a winner puts 52 on the board Auburn can't find a way to win running the punt O'Neill stands the 15 yard line I snap again Plenty pulls this one down Edwards a uh, little hasty there. Yeah, and, and, and that's a situation where it, it wouldn't be wrong to throw Edwards out of the game. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to hit somebody that hard and not give Delta O'Neill an opportunity, and Lambright's letting him know, know that right there. That's not good sportsmanship. And Jim Lambright, as we said, he's going to take care of business. Listen. Now that, that's flat out wrong. There's no place for that. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And Edwards used the crown of his helmet right up underneath the chin of Delta O'Neill. And, and, and I know, you know football is not a sport where you see a lot of sportsmanship, but that, that's so bad, I think they should throw Edwards out of the game for that. Even if Edwards didn't know whether the ball had arrived, that's just too dangerous a play to let go with just a 15-yard penalty. And Delta O'Neill, not, not real happy about it. Neither would I. I mean... It has not been a friendly second half for Delta O'Neill. Interestingly enough, it has been a scoreless second half. Plenty of happiness for Jarzinka. Oh, he's the man. Screen this time for Fields. Fields gets the block he needs. He's at midfield. He's the 40. And he's the 35. And again, he did that, took the dreaded juke step and allowed the pursuit to catch him. It's the this biggest offensive play of the day for Cal. It's a well set up screen, but the difference here is number 63, Caleb Brown. Watch the big guy get outside and lead the way. Vetter sells the pass. Caleb Brown right there, cutting down Hairston. That's a beautiful block by Brown. Vetter slant to Douglas. And Douglas drives ahead, close to the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. Good effort by Damian Douglas. Yeah, but Vetter can't afford to not throw the ball beyond the first down stakes. You've got to stop the clock. And when you throw the ball beyond the stakes, you either get an incomplete pass, and the clock stops, or you get a first down, and the clock stops. And you can sack 12 times. That's easier said than done. Here's a pump fake. Better, no place to go. Make it 13. He's facing pressure there, but but that's that's on better. Better's got to get that ball out of there. You can't take a sack in that situation. I mean, the pressure isn't coming immediately, and better has to know that you know he's facing pressure and he's got to get the ball out of there now. He's gonna close his eyes tonight and see purple. Throws for Pierre, almost made a great one-handed catch.
Washington set a record a week ago with 13 sacks against Utah State, and they're closing in on that. They may have tied that record on that last sack. What a day for the Washington defense. Pressure and Justin better. Great game plan for Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator. Absolutely. Fourth down and seven now. First down, uh, it's going to be close. Now they're going to give it to him. This is going to be a first down. They came up a little short earlier in the game on the same play. This time, I think they got enough. Yeah, he needed to reach the 25-yard line, and he did. The nose of the ball is resting on the 25-yard line, so 2.16 to go. What Cal needs to get a quick score, and then they need a little magic, the type of magic that Washington pulled in the first quarter by recovering an onside kick. Well, we're going to measure to see if they did get enough. If they didn't, the Huskies will take over. He did. He got a very generous spot. Got one of those right-footed spots. This officiating crew has been pretty good on the spots, especially down near the goal line. So a first down for the Bears. They're first in a long time. Better retreats. Here's the screen again. The field. He's got room. Cuts it back. Gets down to about the 12-yard line. That'll be another first down. But of course, the clock is really the ally of the Huskies. Yeah, nice play call once again by Cal. And and tomorrow, Cal will say, why didn't we get to that screen a little bit earlier? They've been having some success, Barry. And facing an eight-man defensive front that's bringing the heat the way the Huskies have, that's a nice play call. You and I actually talked about that at halftime. A momentary delay. Better wants to wait for the crowd. And that's always... It looks like the umpire's having a problem with his whistle there. Short drop, throw an end zone. Piper's break. Can't quite catch up with it. I don't think he had a chance at that. Better threw the ball outside the end zone. Want to be Davis again defending. Well, one thing's for sure, Better has been valiant in his effort this afternoon. I mean, there's no fear with Justin Better. He's only about 5'11". They list him at six feet, but I think he's, you know, barely 5'11". And maybe 195 pounds. But he stood in, he's taken a huge pounding, and he continues to throw the football down the field. Second down and 10. Better throws again, corner pattern, and he threw it exactly the same place. There's the numbers on that. Damian Douglas, once again facing press coverage. Burton with a little hand play at the line of scrimmage and on first down and now on second down better. Just a not, not a good throw. I mean, you've got to keep the football in bounds on a fade run. Three of 16 in third down conversions tonight. A slant. Threw it over the head of Pipersburg. Now it's fourth down. They not only threw it over the head of Pipersburg, I think Pipersburg didn't have a problem reaching for that football. The ball just got on him so quickly. Might have been a little behind him also. Yeah, and, and as a spread guy, you've got to watch the rhythm of the football game, and you got to understand that Washington has been getting to better a lot, and the ball's going to be released a lot more quickly than normal. So you got to get your eyes back to the quarterback quickly. So fourth down for the Bears, the last hurrah, and better ducks underneath, and then throw, fakes it, now he throws it, caught by Douglas, who made a great adjustment. You can credit Damian Douglas with that one. He adjusted perfectly. Yeah, you're right, Barry. Super job of a wide receiver helping his quarterback. Now, this was a quarterback under duress. Damian Douglas wants to be called D1. Well, he was D1 on that one. Yeah, and he, and he lost Nigel Burton in a hurry. I mean, Burton doing a good job of covering in the end zone, the near corner. Better bought some time, got outside. It was a nice play by Douglas to spring free. Rocky in the try for point. Missed it. He missed it. Well, the Bears can't seem to get anything right. Yeah, that's not good. But, but, but right now, even though Cal 
is down by eight points. Their biggest concern is recovering an onside kick. Damian Douglas is on an out route. That was a called pattern. But look at him work back to the inside. The hand signal to help out the quarterback. Actually, he's working against Wandami Davis. And Vetter, looking at another blitz, escapes to the outside. A nifty move to free himself up. And then a throw that was perfect. But Brocky just shanked this. Yeah, Brocky, all you can say is, is that's a hook. He hooked that pretty severely. Special teams of the Bears has uh, been an absolute disaster today. Now look at Douglas and Better on the sideline, though. This is not a tough, it's not an easy situation coming into Seattle and playing against a defense that's revved up like the Huskies have been in this football game. Now everything rests on an onside kick. And you got to appreciate the, the Cal togetherness on the sidelines. They're not bailing ship. They haven't lost hope yet. So the onside try, Brocky hits it hard, and it's uh, picked up by the Huskies. Dane Looker got it at the 45-yard line. Well, that's what the hands team is for, and they got some of the best hands right there in Dane Looker. Now, Dane Looker, this isn't an easy play. This is a nice onside kick, and the ball's hot, and he doesn't secure it immediately. There's an opportunity there for the Cal coverage team to maybe make a recovery. And Looker regained possession in a hurry. So the Huskies have it at the 35-yard line. Bears have one timeout to use. Give this to Hurst, trying to bounce it outside and cut it back to the middle. Time out right here with 1.40.32 remaining. Play of the game, and I don't think there's any question about what that was. Jarzinka takes this punt on his own nine-yard line, and he's just decisive with those first four or five steps. Breaks a tackle, gets to the outside. A pretty good speed by Joe. Now watch, he's going to get into the zone, and he's going to party down to the dog pound here against the best. He's pretty jacked up about that touchdown, and he should be. A great game by Joe Jarzinka. And that's the new Dodge play of the game. He's my player of the game, too. I remember a couple years ago, Barry, he had that long hair, that lo those long flowing locks right. that hung out of his helmet. Now he's gone with the more conservative corporate look. second down here for the Huskies and the uh, Bears could possibly get the ball back with a few seconds left but to say that it's a long shot is to make a great understatement for California. That's exactly right. Not, not a lot of scoring in the second half but we weren't short on excitement. Cal did have their opportunities. seconds or so. Well, our Carl's Jr. player of the game tonight are the players of the game, and it is the Husky defense as they tie a school record that is exactly one week old with 13 sacks in the ball game. 26 sacks in two weeks for the Husky defense. They must be recognized collectively as the player of the game. Yeah, this Husky defense lost so many players from Lambright's 1997 team. We talked about Tony Paris, the All-American free safety, Jason Chorak, who was really the, the sack leader for the last three years for the Huskies, but looks like they're starting to reload, Barry. And they give it to Hurst again, and Hurst will get about three more, and it'll be fourth down. And the clock continues to tick down, and if the Bears get it back at all, they will uh, get it back with about five seconds left, if at all. Yeah, they get this, this football back. There's going to be time for Another. one play, maybe two, if they're lucky. Officials just stopped the clock. And once again, Washington smart up front. They realize that when, when they're bleeding clock, that they the big offensive linemen unpile slowly. The tailback covers the ball. And, you know, he, 
Packers. Well coached football team in every facet of the game and it's always been that way. And they will just uh, let this clock tick down. There's gonna be about a six second differential between the play clock and the game clock. All the way down. And they'll bring the punting team on. And there'll be six seconds left. And they'll back them up five yards here. If I'm California here, I put everybody on the line of scrimmage, except the punt return man. Look at Delvo O'Neal, the lone return man. And uh, you have to pose the question too, uh, will he actually kick the ball? With five seconds left, can he just run around and burn the five seconds? I'm not sure I'd risk a snap back to the punter. Really don't want to punt the ball if, if, if you have to, Barry, and, and uh, or if you can help it. Look at some final scores. Uh, we mentioned these earlier. Ohio State uh, never in doubt against Minnesota. UCLA wins in overtime, and Oregon, though it'll be a long road trip home, doesn't have to hang its head. K State puts 52 more on the board. Florida easy over Auburn, who is really struggling. Florida State shutting out Clemson. That's a good win for the Seminoles. Big upset there. Virginia falling from the ranks of the unbeaten. Penn State uh, beating Purdue a little bit handier than I thought they might. Georgia bouncing back from that loss to Tennessee last week. Here's the upset of the week. Temple is a winner. Arizona bouncing back from the UCLA lost. Arkansas had to come from behind to win that. Colorado stays in the major bowl hunt. Previously undefeated Texas Tech. Tulane, they're still undefeated. Good win for Tulane against a pretty good Louisville team that's been scoring a ton of points. Tulane, it's going to be tough for them to move up significantly with the schedule that they play, but they sure have been impressive. And that's Sean King. He's a real deal at quarterback. So we'll see what the uh, Huskies do here. If they really do punt this ball, Bears will come after it, and he'll just tuck it away, try to run, need a little clock, and the game is over. Good idea. Fleming not taking a chance at all on punting the ball, and he just covers it up. And this game is in the books, and the Washington defense and Joe Jarzinka are the two reasons that the Huskies win it by a 21-13 to 13 count. California's offense unable to do anything. 13 sacks, and Jim Lambright has his team righted and headed for a bowl game. For my partner, David Norrie and Larry Burnett, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.